Hey everybody, happy Saturday. Welcome, come on into my kitchen for quarantine cuisine and I'm making dinner for the family. I'm gonna make something that's really cool. I grew up with this. Um, I got, grew up in a Greek American household, um, a lot of Mediterranean food and things like that. We didn't have a lot of money. My mom was a nurse, my dad was a school teacher. So my mom really knew how to stretch food to make it last and how to cook on a budget. So, you know, in these times with coronavirus and we're all locked down in quarantine, you know, we're trying to use up what we have on hand, what we have in our pantry and our fridge. So I'm going to use things that I pulled out of my pantry and fridge that I needed to use up. I had rice and a lot of rice, which is great. It's also filling. And I had tomatoes, I'm gonna make, I had some onions I needed to use up and a mixture of different cheeses that I just grated in the bowl. Um, some fresh herbs that you can see, I need to use these up. They're already starting to go a little bit brown on me, but they're still good and they'll still make it really flavorful, the sauce. So I'm gonna make this Mediterranean crispy rice pie. And it is so good. My mom used to make this growing up. It's a lot like a spaghetti pie, if you've ever had one of those. Um, I'm gonna use a spring form pan. So something you would make cheesecake in is really easy to make. But if you only have a casserole dish or you have a pie tin or a cake pan, that's fine too. This is just easier to get out once you need to release it out of the pan. You can see it comes out really nicely. Put it on a cutting board and start cutting it. So the first thing I did was I made some rice. So it's really the one, two, three method. So one cup of rice, two cups of water, let it boil for three minutes and then turn it down to a simmer for about 15 to 20 minutes until it's nice and done. And then what I do is I just oil my pan really well. I put all the rice in and I pat it down and just really make it into kind of a pie shape and really get it formed and pressed down and compressed. I add egg in it to, into it first. So three eggs go into it and some Parmesan cheese to get it really flavorful. A little bit of salt goes in and then you just press it into the pan. So once that's done, I bake it for about on 350 for about 15 to 20 minutes to get the crust really crispy and set up. All right, now this is done, I'm letting it cool. And while I'm letting it cool, I'm gonna make a tomato, quick tomato sauce. Now you may have jarred marinara, a tomato sauce already in a can or a jar, that's fine to use it. I'm just trying to use up some crushed tomatoes and onion that I have. So first I'm gonna put in a little olive oil in the pan, just a little touch there, a couple tablespoons in there, and then start my onions. So get those really aromatic. And if you have some garlic, throw the garlic in as well. I like, I say the more the merrier, the more flavor you can add in and build up the better. So I'll put this on about medium high. Oh my, that already smells good. Yeah, you can just smell it. As soon as it hits, and you wanna start with a hot, you know, your, get your pot hot. So you start, start it on high and then turn it down to about medium. Get the oil hot and then right, add in your onions. And you're just trying to sweat the onions, meaning you're not gonna brown them, you're just gonna make them a little translucent or transparent. You can see through them a little bit, nice and clear and glazy. So you're trying to try to get some of that flavor out of the onion that's gonna melt into your sauce. And then what I did was, if I had crushed tomatoes, if you want a chunkier tomato sauce, you can make that. You can just leave that, or I pureed these a little bit. I just put them in a blender and made them puree more so it's a little smoother sauce. But either way, it's gonna have the same amount of flavor. It's just all good. You know, it's really about feeding your family right now. We're all on a budget, we're all out of work. And how can we make everything stretch? How can we use up what we have on hand? How can we avoid grocery stores and going out to the market right now? Because it's really about staying inside, stay isolated, you know, be present with your family. This is a great time to just hunker down with your family and get back in the kitchen, um, practice your kitchen, you know, your cooking skills, or just get in and bond with your family right now and, and stay active, really. It's really staying calm and active and positive as possible. So and if you're single, it's good to it's fun to practice. And Absolutely. This is a good time. I just knew how to cook when I was like in college or after that because my, my parents were big cookers, my grandma. Yeah. You know, both my grand grandmas were big cookers, but they were mostly yeah. baking with me. You know, they taught me how to yeah. bake and then they would make all like their meatballs right. and their briskets themselves. But I think it's amazing if you can learn these skills yeah, this if is you have the some thing. downtime. I agree, because I think the thing is, is right now is to stay sane. When you get bored, this is a really good thing to do, is get right into your kitchen and start cooking something for yourself. You, know, you can always freeze things. 
If you're single and you're alone right now, um, I'm here. You know, reach out to us. Nicole and I are here with our family. Reach out, hit us up. If you have cooking advice that you need or you want cooking tips or how to get started or what can you do if you have, if you are single or you have a small family, what can you do with everything extra? I say freeze it right now. And I think the biggest thing that you've shown me, which makes cooking so much easier when I'm cooking with the boys, or for you, yeah, is like your setup, your mise en place. Right. That's, that's so important. I think that that's a really good thing to start practicing right now is how to get everything. I mean, you always see us on cooking shows. We have everything prepped out. So I have everything in my in my mise en place, which mise en place is a French word that just means everything in its place, meaning everything has a place. So... You know, right now I have my sauce, my onions, and my basil set up with my olive oil because I'm going to cook my sauce. Right over here is, this is going to be the cheese that tops it. This is my setup for, I've got eggs and ricotta to make the filling as well. It so, takes pressure off, like, the actual cooking yes. for people who don't usually exactly. cook. Maybe even for people who cook. And now we have a lot of time on our hands, so it's good to get into some good habits right now. This is just a really good time to take up something that you really love. I know a lot of you out there say, I really love to cook, I want to cook, but I don't have time to. Well, now we all have time to cook more in the kitchen. So once I get my tomatoes, my onions cooked, I meant my onions, now I'm going to put my tomato in. Put some tomato sauce in there. There we go, and stir that up really well. Well, those are really good points, honey. I mean, really are. I mean, it, it's, you know, right now is a time. I mean, I know for me, you know, I love to cook, but I also love to paint. This is the time. I never really have time to paint, but now I'm going to get in and I get a time to paint more. I do oil paintings and so, you know, and things like that. So we really have a lot more time to get in and be creative now and use our creative brains because we're always, you know, in stress mode and we're on overload a lot. So this is the time that we can kind of de-stress with things that we've been wanting to do. Learning a language, you know, whatever it is that you want to do. Play, learning to play backgammon again, right, honey? We're having backgammon tournaments in our house so right now. So much fun. All right, so. Do you want me to show people your painting that you made for me? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Show them the painting. I love that. A Cat Cora original. I can't believe you did this. Oh, honey, thank it's unbelievable. You. Well, I had a lot. Of, you're my muse, so I had a lot of inspiration. All right, so now that I've got the sauce done, you can also simmer that for a while. If you want to simmer it for 15, 20 minutes, I'm kind of fast tracking a little bit just because uh, I'm here with you live. Well, I'm live to tape, but and the kids don't care, and the kids don't <laughs> care. They're just hungry. So right now, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to actually take. My ricotta and eggs, now that I have my sauce ready, it's just sitting there, it's gonna simmer a little bit. I'm gonna take my ricotta, and I'm gonna add, this is ricotta cheese. You can also use things like, um, what else could you use that you have? My, my grandma used cottage cheese in our in our noodle kugel. I yeah. mean, it, we made it on a sweeter side than a savory side, but it's I don't still, know if it would work in rice. It but. would, because the thing is, my, my, my grandmother made lasagna, when she made her lasagna, her cheese, instead of ricotta, she used cottage cheese. Really? So this is something you could absolutely use. You could use cottage cheese if you have that on hand as well. So I'm going to add in one egg, one whole egg, actually. And again, if you don't have eggs, you're scarce right now. I get it. And that's one of the reasons why I'm using um, rice. Is I love rice, and I love this pie because my mom used to make it. But also, pasta is not is very scarce right now. It's hard to get pasta and spaghetti. It's also hard to get fresh eggs. So if you have the carton eggs, like egg white, or you have um, egg beaters or, you know, the yellow eggs, then just use that as well. You know, and just you can freeze it. those, the ones in the box, right? You can freeze them. You can freeze milk. You can freeze eggs. It's pretty amazing. So now that I have this ready to go, all right, I'm going to put my ricotta down. All right, I have the ricotta. So what I'm going to do now. Can you add like pine nuts to this or nuts? You can add anything you want to. You could add some pine nuts is a great idea. You, you, could actually put a, you could put olives in it. You could put different er mixed herbs in it. Um, you can add some chili, Calabrian chili or other kind of chili into it if you want a little spicy hit to it as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the ricotta cheese and I'm going to put it on top of my cooled rice. It's already been baked. Remember, I baked this at 350 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes already. So it's nice and set. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just smear that all over. It's like baking a cake. It looks just like I'm baking a cheesecake <laughs> or a cake. Um, 
it's really messing with my mind right now, actually. I'm like, <laughs> oh, wait, sweet, savory. Uh, but anyway, this is the way you do it. Just kind of messy and fun. And like, this is fun thing that you get the kids in to do. They, they love smearing things. Our kids love to smear things around on the, on the, on food or, you know, I'd rather do it on food than our walls. But so <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> then you want to just take your sauce. Okay. Take your sauce, put it right on. And again, if you don't want it chunky, you can actually put this whole mixture into a blender as well, but I just put it right on. I think it's delicious, just like just like it is. I still have my oven preheated because I'm gonna, I mean, um, on and preheated because I'm gonna put this back in for another 25 to 30 minutes and let it get really nice and crispy on top as well. And plus, and the, 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 the truth is the, the cheese covers it all. So oh, if the yeah. kids don't like it chunky, they don't even see They're not it. even gonna know. It's like <laughs> hiding in plain sight. So here we go. <laughs> We're gonna put all this mozzarella on. This is what I had in here. And a lot of us have shredded cheese. And this is really, use what you have on hand. If this, you have a mixed cheddar and you know white cheese, it's fine. Whatever you have will be delicious when you cut into it. There we go. And I'm using what I need. I'm not gonna use more than I need. I don't wanna waste anything right now. I mean, I'm literally letting it, everything stretch. So I have a little extra. I'm saving this for the next thing. Maybe it's quesadillas in the morning for the kids. So I'm gonna save everything I can, stretch everything, and I mean, it's literally like uh, touch and go in our house, just like it is yours. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop it in the oven now, 350 degrees, there we go, and I'm gonna let that bake for about 25 to 30 minutes, and voila, we'll have this when we come out of it. Look at this beautiful pot. I mean, I not took a slice out already, but in this great. I mean, this is just, and you could serve it on the, you could serve it. Like, I like to take it and I serve it right on the cutting board. You took a slice out, I ate a slice. Yeah, you ate, I can see there's a slice missing <laughs> because this is only one slice. There's two slices missing. So my wife kind of got in there and did a little quality control first. So the, you can just serve it on the cutting board, put the plates out, cut it right in front of everybody and just have a little party. Like, this is the time to get together, sit down, enjoy each other, you know, play some board games after dinner and watch a great movie together. So right now, this is a really comfort dish to me. This is comfort dish, this reminds me of home. Um, you can put spices, use up some of your spices in there too, um, and just really make it comforting, really make it decadent for your family, um, and just decadent on a budget. That's the perfect part of it. So bye everybody, have the best Saturday, stay healthy, stay inside, stay connected. Love you all. See you tomorrow.